Hello, welcome back to my channel, Intuitive Insights in Tarot. I'm Scott, and we have another episode of Esoteric Musings with Dan and me. Hold on, Dan, let me bring you in here. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Hey, I'm every, everything's going all right. Uh, exciting, a lot of news out there. Um, so Yeah, a lot of things happening. I mean, I have a couple esoteric questions, but the the exciting news is kind of esoteric as it is. So we'll see where right. it where it leads. But um, I mean, I got a few questions, um, two definites, and then we'll kind of go where we're gonna go uh, after that, and then later on we'll do spicy questions, which are I think we'll save the stuff that's kind of um, scary or fake scary for the for the Patreon side. I, I got a I got a warning on my uh, Patreon uh, YouTube channel. So I have a separate channel that's not monetized and only has a few subscribers on Patreon. And I thought I could get away with a little bit more. But um, when I did my video on the uh, spiraling sudden D-E-A-T-H yeah syndrome yeah they don't like i got those. flagged for that so i'm gonna yeah. have to i i need to um get a what is it uh rumble i need to i do need to do a rumble yeah. account anyways yeah every day the whatever the algorithm the words it's looking for it, all, it seems like it changes every day so it's hard to keep up with what you can say and what you can't say so do you want to get into it you want to just well i'll discuss the first what we're going to talk about first it's going to be okay. um kanye or ye or yay i think is the, you're saying that might be his current name now what he's known as yay. yeah you well you know it's it's like the hip thing to take the end of a person's name and make it you know so kanye would become yay i guess did a big interview with tucker and he was like the stuff he was saying is like what we we talk about, what the truthers talk about, and it was like one hit after another. And he was using lines that were straight out of seventeen. Like he was talking about green light, you know, go ahead, green light, and um, talking about hybrids. So like he used the word hybrid, she, like made in the lab. He he talked about uh, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this. Uh, P H A R M A. He talked about them. He talked about uh, BLM. That's the thing that started it. it. It was just nonstop, like one hit after another, after another, after another of him, like what he was saying. And um, so I have a few questions on that to see, you know, what's going on. Like, I mean, obviously he's on the good side, but, we, you know, we assume and it came out now and it was just, you know, you can't escape all the things he was saying. So, so I'm wondering is is he actually an alliance asset? Yeah. Or or is he an individual like you and I, you know, yeah. who's just um uh doing research on his own? Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't that, it doesn't would take be much question. research. Yeah. It doesn't take much research. There's certain books like um On a Pale Horse. There's a bunch of books you could just read and all of a sudden you're questioning things, you know. So, yeah, he que he questioned the the false the flaggy thing in Texas. Yeah. He questioned that. He even said when he heard about it, he's like, "Am I in the Truman Show?" Like he he said, "Like these are all." Oh, like, that was that the school, deal. the school yeah. one, right? And he wasn't questioning it. He was just pointing out, like it seemed like everything was so slick and everything was set up. It was like boom, boom, boom. Like everyone was waiting for it to happen and was ready to do it. And he was like, I felt like I was in the Truman Show. Like all these references are exactly what you see in the truther community. So um, we, we can ask that. Was this like his own organic independent thing? Or was he, you know, has he, you don't want to say he's been activated, but has he been given the, has he been greenlit? 
because he's got a huge influence. Huge. Yes. And uh and he like he he like knows presidents, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, so Kanye is coming up five of cups. Hmm. Ten of wands, eight of cups. Oh, look at that. The emperor, that's your Donald oh, card. Yep. That's 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 uh President Trump right there in the middle. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so um obviously he at one time was part of the um the whole Hollywood thing, you know. I mean it's not yeah. Hollywood entertainment, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he married a Kardashian. Uh, he's one of the biggest artists in the world. Uh, so at some point, he walked away from all of that. Eight of Cups in the background. And uh, there's a, a little bit of disappointment. Um, so he's he's given up a lot to do that. Yeah. A lot of money. And uh, opportunity, you know, probably they they pro probably the uh, the the cabal offered him a great position if he uh, stayed with them, but uh, he made a decision that he was oh he he was done with them, and he threw in and and then um, and yes, so the ally the alliance did reach out to him, and because they knew that he could bring on a whole new group of people that normally wouldn't have page of cups. So uh, uh, he's really could reach a lot of young people. He, he's very, I want to say based this four of pentacles. He's, he's very based. So his, his belief system, he's a, he, he's a Christian, right? He's very Christian. Yeah. Uh, so he's got, that's that's why he he um went back to his roots of a christian upbringing and uh and absolutely he was he was asked to come on by the alliance and uh after some thought and having realizing that he's going to have to give up a lot he yeah agreed now I, something so just I think, came in and i think we're going to be seeing a lot more of him yeah. by the way well something came into yeah. my head that also reinforces that, that i just thought of now is when he was he was asked certain questions about certain people um he brought up tesla like nikola tesla right and then he brought up uh when he brought that up tucker started questioning about musk and when he was he didn't say anything negative about musk but when he described him he said yeah you know, Elon's a team player and that lines up with what you've been getting and other two people have been getting where he's, he's not really good. Or he's like a gray where he picked a team. Right. Like he's like a team, but he's a team player. You know what I mean? He's not right. Well, Kanye, if those cards are right, that means he's not really being a team player. He's just doing what he thinks is right. Where his beliefs are. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah, no, it's, he definitely has a, a strong moral um, basis for his, you know, beliefs. Because, listen, you would need that. Um, it would take a lot of willpower to turn down that type of immortality that you get from that level of, of uh, entertainer. Yeah. All right. Well, the next topic is um kind of goes hand in hand with so we we listen you know i listen to a, a whole group of truthers people I, I get irritated when people are upset about if someone's like um is is kind of selling something or has an insider club and all that stuff because i'm i don't care like i don't pay for it and the whole point of the problem we're in is is you don't need a babysitter i'm i'm an adult 
most of this stuff is just entertainment because we kind of all know kind of what's going on, right? And sometimes we get uh, conflicts. So one truther says one thing and the other truther says something else and they claim it, it's supposed to be misinformation. They even said that that's an important part of it is because if people are watching you, you might give out bad info for the bad guys because us, we're just looking for the entertainment. So it doesn't affect us really. It just makes us, oh, I'm sad he said this or my guy was wrong and your guy was right and stuff like that. But to people who are watching them and they're sending messages, the bad, you know, the bad guys, it, it messes them up if they fall for it. So I'm wondering, is the same thing apply to like tarot readers and mediums and psychics where the universe will send you misinformation so that depending on how big you are, what platform you on, that you're sending it out because, you know, if if psychics can be used for like looking into the future for good guys, that means it could be used for the bad guys. I mean, look at the royalty. Uh, like, so they burn witches and people that did that, but they had secretly the best ones in the castle. You know what I mean? Right. Hiding in the back, yeah, doing astrology, right. Right. doing readings. You know, so does the universe give misinformation on purpose to basically win win the whole thing? You lose a little battle here and there, but you're winning the war. Well, I want to I want to talk about something specifically that you're alluding to, and that's the Nord Stream two thing. I and I, I know we said we weren't going to name this in particular, but I I just thought of something that came up that I wanted to talk about, and uh, so I got that it was an illusion twice. I did it one time myself, and then I did it with you, and I got it again. And so I got an email. I got an email from someone who said, uh, Scott, uh, Monkey Works. Now, I know a lot of people know who Monkey Works is. He does uh, military flight radars and all this stuff. And um, she says, Monkey Works has a, has the video of the facts. This is how she said, of the facts of, of the airplanes that day that prove, in her opinion, prove that it was... A real attack right oh the first thing i thought of is um if you had the radar things from september 11th 2001 don't you think that they yeah. they had airplanes flying into the world trade center too but we yeah. all know that there were no airplanes that day so mm -hmm. don't don't tell me that these yeah. are facts they're blips on a video screen that could be made yeah. up by anybody yeah and, and there are also it, it, yeah. helicopters flying around yeah. that day they could have put one of those um they could have put the transponder on a helicopter and just flew it around there and make it look like that so that yeah. doesn't prove to me and anything and in his show because i used to watch him all the time in his show he said they they don't have to show you anything they can turn it on and off whenever they feel like it. That's right. Like, so why know. would they? Why would they turn on their blinker, yeah. you know, their their transponder, saying, "Hey, look, here we are. We're a, yeah. we're a submarine hunter, and we just happen to be over yeah. Nord Stream at the time." Yeah, yeah that was. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I just to okay. the person who sent me that email, thank you. But come on, you know, yeah. let's let's use discernment here. Yeah. And but. And, uh, and Part of this, like we're just talking about what you brought up Monkey Works is he was like, if you keep an eye and if you're on your truther all the time, we watched him a lot. And there was a period where he kind of disappeared and he came back. And if you use your intuition, what we're supposed to be learning, we felt like something seems off. Like maybe he was talked to and maybe he's working like he, you know, he could still, it's not that he's a bad guy. He could be working for the good guys. Yeah. But again, once you work for these guys, if you want to continue getting good intel, you have to sometimes bite the bullet. You have to, you know, take one for the team. Right. And you're told what you can say, what you can't say. So, you know. Just for the record, just for the record, uh, nobody's ever contacted me and told me what to say. Okay. I yeah. just want to make, I want to say that I, I never signed an NDA or anything like that. Just for the record. I mean, mm -hmm. I know some people might be thinking that. Okay. Um, 
yeah so oh okay I, and i i wanted to say that i'm concerned whenever i'm just gonna say janine whenever janine does a reading on the same thing that i do in the past 90 percent of the time they've they've correlated my reading and her re reading have gone together and uh I bow to Janine as being the master of this. I, She's been doing it way longer than I have, way more experience. She's, she's a psychic. And uh, so on the Nord Stream 2 thing in particular, I thought, oh, shit, I screwed it up. I maybe because, and I did let my intellect and my ego kind of guide me the first time because I thought it was fake. So I yeah. wanted to see that in the cards. So did I see it in the cards because I wanted to see it in the cards? That's yeah. why I did it twice. Okay. So and this brought up the question that you brought up. Does the universe sometimes feed false information to tarot card readers who have big audiences and, and psychics, you know? So that's the question, right? Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I'm I'm not in any competition with anybody. Uh, somebody somebody said that to me because. Oh, by the way, let's let's say um, all the information came out and backed Janine's view that yep. it was it was a uh, real event. Okay, let's say. Bill G said it was real. If everybody agreed, and I was the only one saying it was fake, then I would say obviously I got it wrong. Okay, and I would, yeah. and I would probably come out and say, hey, you know what? I must have misread the cards, or I just got it wrong, or for some reason the universe gave me the wrong answer. And I made a comment that, hmm, it looks like I was right and she was wrong. Do you think she's going to come out and say that? And somebody said shake my head i didn't know this was competition and i want you to know that that really hurt me because you're supposed to be someone who's been supporting me for a long time and you trust me and you know that i'm an honest sincere person and that i'm not here to try to best anybody be better than anybody to compete with anybody it's not what i'm here i let go of my ego a long time ago you know, yeah, and uh, so yeah, I was very offended by that, by the person who said that to me, and uh, I almost, um, well, I don't want to say what I was going to do. So, uh, so yeah, uh, but if I if I make a mistake, if I say something and it turns out to be wrong, I'll be the first one to come out and say that. Okay, just letting you know. All right, sorry. That was my little rant that I, I and I had to get that out. I just had to get that out. But By the I way, think... if I if I wanted to to have a competition with somebody, do you think that I would pick the biggest tarot card reader on on YouTube to pick a fight with? Really? I mean, that would be like uh I'm a high school I'm I'm the star pitcher on my high school team and I want to go up against uh the pros. <laughs> Come on. But the whole point the whole point of you doing it twice is because you kind of still have that uh, what i feel like is you're still in that um master student relationship where you kind of you've learned from her so if she's the master and you're not lining up with her it it, it kind of makes you second guess and on top That's of right. it yeah yeah and on top of that i don't think you should so if the whole world was saying one thing and you got a reading that said the other, I don't think you should think that you got it wrong. You might have been the one person who got it right and everyone else is being told something that's supposed to be hidden. <laughs> that's true. So that's true. Like you never know. OK, I so, you know, so let's let's look so. at this. Let's find out. Does the universe sometimes give misinformation to me or Janine or Utsaba so or any anyone else? I'm not talking about Anons. I'm not talking about um uh, you know, I'm talking about people who use esoteric means. Yeah. Uh, well, and... to, to get it straight, in um, this uh, earthly realm, there already is 
like strategies of using misinformation. So this is just a question of like in the spiritual realm, does the universe do the same thing? Justice. Justice under the Queen of Wands. So she's very authentic. Okay, we've got the Six of Swords in the background here. So information is always coming out through through sources, uh, esoteric sources. And uh, it, it plays to the strengths of that person. Okay, so um, it's not so much, I'm not getting any type of disinformation cards here, but it's certain people have different audiences and the universe plays to their strengths. That's the way I'm getting this. So like... Strengths and the chariot. Sometimes certain people are are used to push through certain themes, certain ideas, and then other people are used for certain others. But um, I think it's all it all depends on the viewer, how the viewer interprets it. That becomes your own your own truth. This is a very individualistic thing, by the way. I, and I've said this before that how it feels like the universe revolves around me, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I think that if everybody, and I want to put you on the screen here because you you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When you when you um analyze your life, it seems like all these arrows are pointing at you, and things yeah. happen just to you that don't happen to other people. If you tune into it, if you um, understand synchronicity and uh, how you affect your reality. So uh, so all I can say from this is that the universe puts the right information in the right person at the right time. And nothing is really right and nothing is really wrong. That sounds, I know that doesn't yeah. sound like a good answer here, but. It's not information like somehow there was some truth in what one person said, even if they disagree, there's some truth in this and there's some truth in that. It's not black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that that's interesting. By the way, this kind of goes with um, the whole debate about the shape of the earth. Um. I've been saying it for a long time that it has everything to do with the individual's perception, whether or not it's round or flat or whatever. You know, if you if you perceive it to be a globe, then you're going to see a globe in all the evidence. And there's nothing I can do to convince you convince you that it's not. Yeah. So for you, for all intents and purposes, it's a globe. And I'm not going to argue with you because you know what? That's your reality. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. It's got to be flat. I don't know. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, it, it came up the other day and I forgot where I was remembering it from. You ever seen that video? He's like an ex KGB guy. It's like an 80s video where he's being interviewed. Is it this guy with these glasses and he's talking about the different psychological ways to break down, basically destroy America. And um, it's all psychological to get the people to the point where they're so delusional that, say, if they were in front of a, a, a concentration camp, you could show it to them. You could may even be able to put them in it and they still would refuse to believe it exists because it's so they're so brainwashed. And that's what's yeah. happening. I mean, what's happening now is that there are people that just live in a completely different reality. It's, it's hard to believe. But there's almost like these two matrices going on at the same time 
where we yes. can see behind the curtain and they can't. And it's pointless yeah. for me to try to wake them up. They got to wake up on their own. I mean, that's right. You know, it, it, it or stinks never. because it's, yeah. And and the farther it goes, I think the it, the worse it's get it's gonna get. So, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go back to a while back when I kept getting the Queen of Swords, and I think it's just reminding everybody, everybody who's watching my channel, unless you're a troll out there, Michael Brown, my cousin, if you're if you're watching this, <laughs> I know you want to troll me bad, uh. But uh, if you're not if you're not a hater and you're watching this channel, then um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyways, what you were just saying. All right, let's go. Let's let's move on. All right, let's talk about. Let's do a quick quick little one to see um, see if any questions come up in our head. There continue. Um, Texas and Florida, well, Florida, they're dealing with their own issues, but Texas is still shipping out people, let's say, to certain areas, you know, and these certain areas that brag that they like having migrants, immigrants, are can't handle it. They're like, oh, we want it as long as they stay in your yard. Um, and even to the point where New York City is under a, a state of emergency because they can't handle the influx of immigrants. And mm. I'm wondering, just, I just want to wonder what's the deal because it could be a, a lot of things. Obviously it's to punish. It's to show the world that, that it's hypocritical that you want this, but only for, you know, other States, but not your state. You, you brag you're a sanctuary state, but you can't handle it. Um, there was a, there was kind of a hint and people thought that, uh, military was coming in right from other countries and they were sneaking in because they were pretending to be immigrants and they were sneaking in is this us doing the same thing where we're sending you know white hats into the blue states pretending to be immigrants i'm wondering is is that strategy being used by the white hats now to get people on the inside in blue states Okay, I, all right. Seems a little far fetched, but uh, I'll entertain the idea. Because I keep hearing that we're doing what they do to us to them now. Right. Uh, I should name these cards. Okay, so this is the Nine of Swords and the Eight of Swords. Seven of Cups in the recent past and the Star. And then the outcome is the Nine of Pentacles. And then to clarify, we have the Empress. The Empress and Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so on the question, uh, I'm getting that's a yes, Dan, that th these are um, somehow by sending these people people into these countries, I think it's it's more to more like what you said, it's to overwhelm these places because this eight of Pentacles is is being held prisoner, right? Yeah. And what it does is it makes them more vulnerable somehow, and uh, and give and, and gives them more more things to worry about. So it's overwhelming oh, yeah, yeah. the system. It's it's okay. that's what they're they're using it to overwhelm these systems to create a state of emergency. Yeah, you know. Uh, now it's one more thing for but, them to juggle while they're doing their stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's independent but it's it's not something that 
it's not something that the alliance is doing. It's not a planned alliance thing. It's more like this is something that is a natural occurrence that the universe. It's like more like it's more like karma. Yeah, it's, it's a karmic. It's a karmic thing. So, um, like this is a this is a problem that the liberals created, and now they're paying the price for it. Um, so this is a this is a soft yes. It's a yes, but not exactly for the reasons that you think or who's doing it, why it's why you know why it's being done. All right, but it's it's definitely uh, and also I I want to say that um, it looks like it's. Somehow, for the benefit of these people, I think somehow. Well, I'm saying this because there is these people who are very stressed out, who are finding relief by coming to America. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, some some of these yeah. people who are coming from these very very bad places, like I don't know Venezuela or whatever. Even though they may be homeless in America or whatever they're suffering in America, it's better off than what they left. You know yeah. what I mean? And, uh, but they're doing it independently. They're, so there's not somebody who's like forming caravans, I want to say. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm not sure if that does it. What's this doing here? I gotta close this. I did something weird with my with my screen here. Anyhow, uh, so I don't think it's some part of some bigger plan, but mm -hmm. it it is benefiting man mankind by by doing this. It's putting these blue blue states, blue cities in a vulnerable position, also where they have to address the problem. Yeah, you know. Well, do you want to do one quick? I only had one esoteric, like really wacky esoteric one. It involves aliens too. So, do you want to do a quick one that's sure. out there and wacky? All right. Sure. Um, it's about uh, cattle mutilation and cloning so um have you ever heard that like interview old interview about a guy talking about how they've had cloning since like the 30s and he was describing like uh uh boys from brazil watch that movie that's how you they do cloning they all they do is they need the initial embryo like genetics like they need to stimulate it and then they just need a uterus so they usually just, you could just use it as an animal you could use a sheep or a cow so I was thinking, is that why, because whenever they have cattle mutilations, there isn't any meat missing, only the um, uh, female, like the uterus, like the, the ovaries and the uterus of the cow is removed. So I'm wondering, is these are these cattle mutilations never been alien, off world? It's always been human, just to use them for cloning. Because so um, if you could do it with a sheep, like to clone a human, you're going to know if a sheep is pregnant. But if you have this big hulking animal like a cow, since the guy said you only need like 14 days or a short period of time to start the process and then you could finish it off somewhere else, that means you can impregnate a, a cow and you wouldn't even know it's pregnant because it's a human clone, whatever it is. And then you right. come by later and take the take the uterus and the clone and get out of there. So I'm just wondering if it's always just been humans or and no off world or stuff. Right. <clears throat> okay. By the way, I remember reading about cattle cattle mutilations in Omni magazine. I don't know if anybody remembers Omni magazine back in the yeah. 80s. That's when I I first uh, learned about it. I remember it freaked me out as a as a little kid.
Like, should you have been reading that book as a little kid? Well, I mean, I, I was a teenager oh, okay. in the 80s. I was, uh, you know, 15, 16. It's amazing I could read it all, being as dyslexic as I was. Uh, but yeah, it was it was fairly mainstream. It was just the uh, alien stuff mostly. But uh, most people were not into that kind of stuff back then. I, I saw um, Chariots of the Gods when I was like 11 or 12, and that blew my mind. Okay, so your question was, were aliens or off-worlders ever involved, or has this always been more of a, uh, a human cabal, black hat type of operation? Yeah. So um, we have got no off-worlder cards here. Oh. Justice in the background. Queen of Swords and the Five of Cups. And this is the King of Pentacles in the middle. So it's it's always it was always used by by uh terrestrial or let's say uh non non-off-worlders so yeah you're right about that and initially it was used by the black hats to create these clones i think but then that technology was either taken away from them five of cups they lost the ability to do that at some point and the white hat stepped in because that would that would be like an abomination, I think, and yeah. and they it's it's been put an end to, so um, at least using how to do it. I but I think how mutilations are still ongoing. That stuff like that is still happening. Yeah. Is that right? It's see, I don't I don't know if it if it's happening to the amount or it's just not reported on. Okay, but I, it's very interesting that we have the sun down here. So, and and we know that um, white hats are using clones, right? Yeah. So it's been they they would, however they're doing it, they've somehow turned that technology or that uh, that process in a way to be beneficial for mankind. So what I'm thinking is, you know, the clones that they use to replace the people who've been dealt with in tribunals, that would be for yeah. the benefit of mankind. Yeah, that it's, it's used strategically now, where it was used against the human, human beings in the past. Now it's being used to benefit human beings. And yeah, you're right. I think that there, we don't have any off water cards here. So, uh, so yeah, I think you're you're onto something there, Dan. I I think it's very interesting that uh, the outcome is the is the sun, though. So uh, yeah, it's being used positively. It, I mean, that's what. We yeah, it, it, they're they've taken it and they're using it to you know benefit mankind okay. let's let's save all the um uh ww3 drama for the the patreon part because you have a couple we have a couple questions relating to that um okay so let's... at at this point at this point i'm going to plug my patreon a bit okay. um so I I would like to do a lot more on Patreon, but it's kind of hard for me sometimes to get videos up on there. Um, and for that reason, I always say, come over to Patreon, $1. That's all I ask. 
-hmm. You know, if, if, if you're paying $1 a, a month and I only put out a couple of videos, well, then that's still a pretty good deal. Don't you think, Dan? Yeah. Well, there are people that, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts and there are some podcasts that are once a month or like twice a month and they have a, a, a you know, a, a member section where they give like a free amount. And then the second half is, you know, you pay it. And if you, you don't want to, you don't want to, but um, it's usually to get early access to stuff behind the scenes stuff, all that stuff, you know, that yeah. we, we don't, you know, you know, put up on YouTube. So, I mean, it's well, a dollar a month is nothing. So it's worth it. Right. Uh, that's what I mean. It's some, some, some people come to Patreon and they, they want to support me. So they, they think of it as a donation. Like some people, uh, $10, you, you guys, I think pledge $30, right? Yeah. And you, you don't have to do that, but I, I assume, you know, that's your way of helping me out. Yeah. You know, supporting me. Uh, so yeah, that's all I want to say is, um, please come over to Patreon and, you know, every once in a while I get some really good stuff up there and, and I, and I do, uh, I do free mini readings Yep. where, uh, if you're on my Patreon, I put you on my wheel of fortune and I spin it and then I give you a little mini reading right there. So that's anyways, I, all I'm asking is for $1, yeah. you know, I'd buy that for a dollar. Okay. So uh, are we gonna go to the spicy stuff now? Yeah, let's switch to the spicy stuff because we got a we got a big clump of you know it's exciting everything's happening WW three is being shown in front of his face so we got a few questions on that and we'll take it to the oh the uh, the nuclear submarine with the there's a whole tsunami. there's more yeah yeah well, go ahead go ahead and tell us some of the things you're gonna okay we got the. Uh, we got the missing subs. We got Rocket Man shooting rockets everywhere. We got uh, Mr. Um, the guy who's the head of the Kazarian land over there in the U, U land. He he wants hmm. WW3 Say started. His name. Yep. Zelensky. Yeah. And he wants, he basically, it's, he's basically like blackmailing. Please give me money or start world war you know ww3 um and we got craziness going in iran there that's a hot button where that could start something um we got south korean military stuff going on we got poland wanting to get into the action we, we can so, do this in, in it's already yeah, so, what it's already eleven thirty there well, we won't do all that but we're generalizing and we'll ask because i also have something that's it's esoteric too, but it is about WW3. So we'll, we'll move into the next section. Okay, so uh, we're going to do a pause for edit here. Uh, goodbye to all my YouTube uh, viewers. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And please come join us, join us over on Patreon for the spicy stuff. Goodbye.